Ladies and gentlemen, the New York Jets, the gift that just keeps on giving for Isn't all it? of us. All of us. It's amazing. Um, if you guys were here last week, Paul got absolutely torched in the comment section. Yeah, what so the hell was that about? I know. I don't understand it. I don't understand. You know what? Teams, we have to realize that there are other fan bases out there that are just as passionate about their teams as we are about the Bills. And it's fine. It's fine. But, Paul, what was the, the – Obviously, I'm talking about the Miami Dolphins video. We decided to peek over the, you know, over the fence and try to look at the other AFC East teams and see what did they do in this offseason to dethrone the Bills because the Bills are the reigning AFC East champion. Uh, a lot of people put them in the top five of the NFL. So, what did the Dolphins do to try to usurp them? And then the, tonight's episode is going to be the Jets. But Paul, the amount of people that said to you. <laughs> And because you guys know Paul's the only one that does the comments on the YouTube videos that said, if we could stay healthy, I mean, constantly. constantly, that was it. Every single comment was about the, the fact that Tua was a MVP caliber before he got hurt. And if he could stay healthy, like, listen, guys, he's been in the league long enough. Homie hasn't played a full season in the NFL yet. <laughs> They've tried to replace him multiple times every year. As a matter of fact, they tried to replace him. You know, like it's just it was absolutely amazing to me to watch just the pure like it, like the hopey changey. Like, I'm so glad that, you know, you're saying that the Bills aren't good because they barely beat your third string quarterback. But a win's a win and L's an L. And if we're here for moral victories, then I guess congratulations. You know, like, I guess. I mean, like, the Carolina Panthers fans go like, hey, remember when we almost beat Brady? In the Super Bowl, we lost by three. Right. <laughs> Nobody yeah. cares. Nobody no. cares. No. Uh, which is fine. I mean, you know, Dolphins fans have to realize, before you come at Paul in the chat, please realize something. He does not care. No. Neither do I. No. <laughs> we don't own the team. We're not affiliated with the Bills. We don't have a shit. We've never played a down for them. Paul's never been in the front office for them. No. Joe's never been in the front office. We do not care. This is no. the show. Relax. Yeah. Have a Coke and a smile and shut the <laughs> up. <laughs> no, but that being said, we do have to focus on the Jets because, you know, Paul and I might be on different sides. I mean, we were pretty much in agreement last week when we had Ryan and Joe and Paul and everyone on the show and talking about the Miami Dolphins. They do have a lot of talent, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And there are some things in there that were kind of like, eh, we don't know why you made that move, why you made this move. It's okay. It's fine. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on the New York Jets. And before you guys even do that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below and follow us on all of our socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All shows will be on iTunes and Spotify. I'm going to say, obviously, the elephant in the room, Aaron Rodgers. And I think we're going to have some different um, different opinions on this. No, I do not look like him, number one. Number two, Joe, I want to ask you. It's obviously an upgrade over Zach Wilson. How much of an upgrade do you think it is? And do you think at this point in time in his career, he recently had two MVPs. Let's not forget that. Yeah. Going to the Jets, which is just – that's like volunteering to go to Alcatraz. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why he would want to go to the New York Jets in AFC East when he had everything perfect, set, perfectly set up for him in Green Bay, obviously situations being what they were. Mm -hmm. How much of an upgrade is it for the Jets to get Aaron Rodgers on their team? I think the biggest, first of all, talent-wise, it's a huge upgrade. Just based mm -hmm. on pure talent alone, right? You talk about a guy backpack MVPs just two and three seasons ago. Like it wasn't that long ago. We're talking about this guy as one of the best in the league, if not the best in the league. So talent-wise, I think this is a huge upgrade for the Jets. For me, it, it's so much more than that, though. He didn't handle the Green Bay media well, and now we're going to New York and. <laughs> I don't think the media is going to take it any easier on him than they did in Green Bay. Oh, you poor little baby, let me coddle you. I don't think that's what New York does. You also look at his his preseason routine, whatever you want to call it, right? He is notorious for struggling out of the gate, notorious for it, because most of the time he wouldn't do preseason. Is he going to do preseason now? I, I just don't know. But then you also look at, and I brought it up last week during the Dolphins video, I think we brought it up momentarily, 
you look at the defenses that he's played in the NFC North throughout his career compared to the defenses he's going to play. Now, the good news going off of that, the good news for him is he's playing against a really great Jets defense every single week of practice, right? So mm -hmm. uh, he'll get to see a lot of different looks. Um, but if you're talking about just talent-wise, I think this is a, a, a really huge step for the New York Jets, uh, New Jersey Jets, depending. Um, uh, but Jets fans will always say in the comments, you think that bugs us, it doesn't bug us. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, I got to be honest with you, right? When when Rodgers, you know, decided that the Jets were where he was going to go, and let's be honest, that's what happened, mm -hmm. right? There was a short list of teams that were, were even financial fits, and the Jets, having no earthly idea how to build a roster, mm -hmm. had plenty of money to just give to Aaron Rodgers. The, basically, it's like the equivalent to, you know, putting two coins uh, over his eyes and sending his career down the river sticks, right? <laughs> Going to the Jets. Because that roster, from a talent perspective, incredibly talented, right? But building a roster just off of talent isn't what the NFL is about. Like, Lakin Tomlinson. Love Lakin Tomlinson as a guard. I think he's Ooh. I think he's a top 20 guard in the NFL. I thought that last year. I was hoping the Bills were going to make a run for him at the trade deadline. I love Lake and Tomlinson. Or the two seasons before that, he was we was at the Jets last year. It was two seasons mm -hmm. ago. Uh, Elijah Vera Tucker. We had talked about him when he was mm -hmm. eligible for draft. We're like, listen, Buffalo's got a guard problem. This kid plays tackle. Who goes to USC? He'd make a great move into guard. Connor McGovern liked him so much. We signed somebody whose name is almost exactly the same. So. <laughs> The problem with the Jets offensive line is the fact that you got Dwayne Brown at left tackle, who just simply is not great at football. Mm -hmm. And Mekhi Becton, who's playing the wrong sport, right? Like, other than that, the Jets are are very, very talented on the offensive side of the ball. Corey Davis, who, I, again, is watching his career just die, is mm -hmm. sucking at my soul. Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Mecole Hardman. Denzel Mims, like you got guys that could just absolutely fly. Mm -hmm. And then you added Brees Hall and you already had Michael Carter. Like this is a dynamic <laughs> offense. If you can make sure that Rogers doesn't get treated like Trent Edwards by week six, right? <laughs> like that's, that's, that's the worry here. Right? Well, and and to your point, to, to your point, when, when a team is listening to a player, I don't care who it is, and says, oh, we'll bring in Randall Cobb or Lazard because we know that's what the quarterback we're going to get wants, there's a problem. There's a real mm -hmm. problem. And, you know, right. I, I, I don't think, you know, I look at Adam Lazard and I say the fact that that's one of the biggest uh, free agent signings this year says a lot because I'm not a huge Lazard fan, to be honest, and I don't think he should be on this roster with the other receivers that you mentioned. You know, I started this show talking about the, the comment section should not come for Paul, but if everybody in the New York area, metropolitan area, in all five boroughs decides to just come after Paul after that, Dwayne Brown is just not good at football. <laughs> He's Beckton not. He's in the wrong sport. Yeah. Listen, Mackay Becton, call Greg Hardy. He did the MMA thing for a while. Mackay Becton could beat some ass as a super heavyweight. <laughs> You see him out there. You see him out there at tackle. <laughs> He's swatting at flies. Yeah, hammer uh, fists. I like. Here's the, here's the thing that gets me. We always talk about when you sign a veteran, you're effectively going to not on purpose. You're going to stunt the growth of the guy that's behind him when you sign a veteran. If you decide to play the veteran ahead of the kid, mm -hmm. obviously Garrett Wilson, his stock is rising. First round talent, excellent player. Paul, I. In, in pain as much as you and Corey Davis. It, his career didn't pan out oh. the way I thought it was. The guy's just an absolute freak. Denzel Mims can fly down the field. Miko Hardman, I he could turn the lights off and be in bed before it's dark. Like I am I am waiting for the Jets to cut Corey Davis and for Buffalo to sign him. No, but to harken back to to harken back yeah. to the episode that we just did about Gabe Davis, right? Corey Davis <laughs> fixes an, fixes an awful lot for you on that <laughs> roster, doesn't he? he? He does, but you look at – here's the thing that I get out of all that. Obviously, Miko Hardman played with um, – what the hell is his name? Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes. I don't know why I just brain fried her there. I couldn't even think of Patrick Mahomes. 
All right, so Har- Hardman played with, with, with Mario. Listen, with Mahomes. It's, it's one of those things you have to you have to you have to face your fears. Yeah, embrace it. But yeah. you look at the, okay, Lazard, Cobb, they've played with Rogers, so they know. You know, we we've we've said it all the time when when Buff when when teams bring in talent from the coach. He's essentially going to be the offensive coordinator over there. The, Nathaniel Hackett is getting a free paycheck in New York. Let's just let's just be what it is. He's going to let Rogers call whatever he wants. Adam that's Gase. Why, Adam that's Gase why. That's why. Yeah. yeah, Adam Gase. He's going to let him call whatever he wants. Soleil is going to be like, listen, I got the defense. You good? Okay, you're good. But you look at that. Lazard and Cobb are going to be in the room with those guys in order to try to tell them what Rogers likes, what he doesn't. So mm-hmm. Rogers doesn't have to do that. He's a diva now. Well, I mean, that's not a bad thing either. Mm-hmm. But you look at it. You look at Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, and Denzel Mims. Who the hell were throwing them the ball over the mm-hmm. past two years? Mm-hmm. That, you know, I mean, well, Wilson for only been there for a year, but you look at Corey Davis's career. Who's been throwing him the damn ball? Now mm-hmm. you bring in Aaron Rodgers, who, as Joe said, he was not a, he was MVP not too long ago. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's getting up there in age, but he is going to make that entire wide receiver core freaking scary. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is terrifying, which means that right. you get mm-hmm. Miko Hardman, obviously. <clears throat> so maybe you're not going to completely stunt the growth of Mims and Davis, but you and, and Wilson's just going to be a freak. They those guys may be more dangerous than the pundits even say, mm-hmm. you know, coming out. I mean, you got Brees Hall, it's gonna be coming around wrong. What do you think? Mid season guys? They could be coming yeah. back around mid season. Yeah. So you're gonna have to do some patchwork stuff there. Although the Packers never ran the ball anyway. So it's not like you're going to be missing something with it's not because they're not successful at just because they just stop. They just don't. They just yeah, they, they don't. forget they to run the ball. I mean, like Paul said last year about uh, last week about uh, the Dolphins. He's like Raheem Mostert was running at like seven yards a clip against the Bills, and then the second half forgot he was on his team. Yeah, you know that's why when the Packers drafted AJ Dillon, I was like, well, okay, <laughs> well, okay, that's okay. Uh, good for you guys. <laughs> I. Re- but I, I I agree with you. They they do have trouble on the line. Yeah. Um, wow. A, a stud top five quarterback, a patchwork wide receivers, and trouble with their line. Are we talking about the Bills? <laughs> I mean, for a better part of two decades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you're talking and, and, about. And, you know, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. The Jets did try to address the offensive line in the draft. You know, they had mm-hmm. two back to back picks, offensive linemen. Uh, Joe Tipman and Carter Warren. So, you know, they are trying to do a little patchwork there as well. So we'll see what happens with that. That's the, as Paul says a lot, the, 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 the fare for that ride is very expensive. You're going to put a rookie yeah. center in front of Aaron Rodgers. Good luck. Yeah. Absolutely but I mean, not. I think Tipman can do it. I think Tipman can, I, eventually he's going to be the starter there. And that's why they did that. They decided mm-hmm. to, you, you get, you get drafted as a center in the NFL at any team. You're there for 15 years. That's, mm-hmm. that's how it works. Unless, right. That's coach that drafted you gets traded somewhere, and then you go play for him. So you know all of his stuff. Um, that's the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, they're going to have to do some stuff with the running back position prior to it. Uh, they did something with the running back position, Joe. They do something with the running back position recently. <laughs> I don't know. The Jets? Yeah, that caused the... a little bit of a stir on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll say it since nobody likes me here anyway. Uh, so Ty Johnson was giving the Jets the business because they told him to get off season surgery that he didn't want. He got it, and then they cut him. Yeah, true story. Uh, true yeah, story. that's yeah. like yeah. you know, it's, if someone asked me to cut my hair, and then they're like, "Okay, we'll give you this job if you cut your hair," and I cut my hair, and they're like, "Yeah, we already gave it to somebody else." <laughs> you didn't cut Thanks, it, Mario. <laughs> I'm not cutting it. All yeah. right, so let's look at let's look at the defensive side of the ball, which I mean, obviously. The New York Jets, after signing Aaron Rodgers, they think that that move alone solves a lot of things on the offensive side of the ball. Only delegating, let me see, th- they delegated three picks to the offensive side of the ball, as Joe said, Joe Tipman and uh, Carter Warren, and then also a seventh-round pick in Zach Kuntz, who is a tight end, who's currently, according to our lads, fourth on the depth chart. Right. And then you look at the defensive side of the ball for the, for the New York Jets, which is impressive on paper. I mean, obviously you got Sauce Gardner, who, I mean, and boy, that guy's good. He's good. He's, he's good. good. He holds more than Dwayne Brown. I mean, that's crazy. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> but the point is this: they they delegated a first round pick in Will McDonald, the fourth, uh, as a defensive end. Obviously, you got Carl Lawson there, and you got John Franklin Myers. You got Quentin Jefferson, and oh, that sounds familiar. Quentin Jefferson and Quentin Williams in the middle. 
Uh, Quentin Jefferson, obviously a former Seahawk and Bill. Mm-hmm. Um, Mosley in the middle looked so impressive last year. I know he's in his 30s, but last year with Saleh, he looked so impressive commanding the middle of that defense than he has in his entire career. Mm-hmm. So he scares me. You got Quincy Williams, you know, coming over from Jacksonville. But I mean, you look at the look at the back end here. You got uh, DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner as your starting corners, and then Chuck Clark and Jordan Whitehead as your safeties. You know, it's mm-hmm. Gardner was the only guy that was drafted by the Jets. Everyone else was either a trade or unrestricted yep. free agent. That's right. So, well, and being, don't, and don't forget, like the Jets are doing something that the Bills also have a tendency to do, and that is they go out and get former first round talent, like across yeah. the defensive line. Solomon Thomas was a was a third overall yes. pick. You yeah. know, and while his career hasn't been amazing, his third overall pick by the Niners, Niners. Yeah. wasn't that when the Niners? Wonder why he's traded? here? Is that yeah, right? Wonders why with the Jets, you know what I mean? Yeah, touche. But yeah. isn't that when the Niners traded back? Um, they did. From, they traded back from two to three with yeah. the Bears, and the Bears wanted to go up to get Mitchell Trubisky. That's it. Was the Biscuits draft? That's it right. It was draft. the Biscuits draft. Who was number yeah. one overall during in that draft? Quiz time. I don't remember. It was the Mahomes draft. It was 2017. I'll look yeah. it up while you talk. So you didn't know? No, I didn't. <laughs> don't quiz us with shit. No. <laughs> Miles Garrett. That's what it was. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. That's uh, fine. <laughs> I don't know anything, guys. I just asked these guys for it. And then the chat corrects me. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No, no chat. No chat on this episode. <laughs> no chat on this episode. Yeah, it's oh, like yeah, ask your friends, like, hey guys, do you know this tri- answer to this trivia question? No, I know. I'm like, yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? And you just go on with your life. Uh, but the defense. This is what's the ball. wrong with our education system. <laughs> Mario was very knowledgeable before cell phones came out and you could check everything. Yeah, Google so has made me stupid. Google <laughs> has, has absolutely fact. made me stupid. No, Paul spends most of his time on over the cap and pro football reference. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I find the weirdest stuff. Those are the only sites I can mention on. On a, a video. <laughs> Clear browser incognito, here. Incognito, incognito, incognito mode exists for a reason, guys. Listen, everybody should use it. I encourage it. Listen, I, it's not the end of the episode, but I want to remind everyone as, as a chance I can. Clear your browser history. <laughs> if something happens to you and someone has to get your computer, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, that being said, do you think that the that the <laughs> I mean, what were the scores? I don't know this question either. What were the scores of the games last year against the Jets? I don't think we, I don't remember them being very, very high. We won twenty to twelve in the second meeting, and then we lost twenty to seventeen in the first meeting. Okay, all right. So they're they're going to be defensive battles. Obviously, when Sean McDermott and Robert Saleh, two defensive head coaches, they want mm-hmm. to completely shrink the game down. You're going to have two quarterbacks going to be like, no, we want to air it out. We want a 35-32 game here. Did they do enough on the defensive side of the ball, or do they have to? You know, Paul, we talked about it with the Buffalo Bills quite a bit. They've had incumbent starters for longer than you normally do in this day and age in the NFL. Is -hmm. that what Saleh is trying to do? Because it is a copycat league. So if he's just trying to get his guys in there while someone takes care of the offense, is that what he's effectively doing? Because if we we had to talk about it, Brian Dable was really the offensive guy in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. He took care of the offense. McDermott oversaw some stuff, but I don't think he was contributing a lot. Right. Nick Soleil, I don't think he contributes a lot to the offense. That's why they have Rodgers. So right. did they do enough or did they have to do enough this offseason to overtake the Buffalo Bills? So first off, how is C.J. Mosley only 30 years old? <laughs> <laughs> we just get to the important stuff here on this on this podcast finally. How is C.J. Mosley only 30 years old? I thought he was way over 30. I thought he was like 33 or something. I thought he was like 33, 34. Yeah, he was 28 too. when he graduated from Bama. <laughs> <laughs> first off this defense is not all that scary to me right but no. they're very well coached and i oh, think yeah. that's the difference right mm-hmm. um and imagine what the buffalo bills defense is going to be with sean mcdermott calling all the plays right what are they going to be they're going to be very well coached on the defense yeah i totally agree these games are going to be low scoring affairs in in all likelihood right of course, the Jets are going to Jets. The Bills are going to Bills. Every once in a while, you're going to lose a game you shouldn't lose. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, the talent on the defense is good, but they'll they'll be one of the best coach defenses in, in the NFL. Um, you know, and I think we used to be able to say that about the Patriots, and mm-hmm. I think those days are over now, right? Mm-hmm. I think I think we're all kind of past that. 
But with the Jets, listen, they've got enough talent on paper to be very dangerous, but the history says you can just wait this team out, right? And especially with an aging quarterback, you look at when Brett Favre went from the Green Bay to the Jets, that mm-hmm. started great. That looked like the like a greatest move for that franchise. And then you waited six weeks and it wasn't the greatest move anymore, right? Like mm-hmm. all in all, those hits are cumulative at an NFL level, right? Yes. And while while Rogers is great, Rogers is is one is one turnstile away from you know holding the clipboard for Zach Wilson. And, and nobody that's a Jets fan is like, oh, I can't wait for that. Can't wait for this kid yeah. to get his opportunity. Right. Yeah. If a Buffalo is not in all that dissimilar situation there. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think, you know, it both football is a game of attrition. And I think with the Jets this year, it's going to that attrition is going to matter. Previous seasons, I don't know if it really did. Uh, this year, that that attrition is going to matter. Yeah. The, the interesting part. No, I'm sorry, Joe, I'll kick it over to you one second. The interesting part that I see is that the Jets are hoping that they get the 2017, 2018 Rodgers. Because if you think about it this way, if you, if the Jets are coming at it from this standpoint, our defense is top 10. When was the last time Rodgers had like a top 10 defense mm-hmm. in the NFL? I mean, he, he I think he went to the Super Bowl with that defense. Pretty sure. Uh, it, it, there's, like a, there's like a joke or a meme going around that said that if you added up all the top 10 defenses that Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, um, all those guys had, and you compare it to the, the amount of top 10 defenses that Tom Brady had. Brady had more since turning 40 than mm-hmm. those guys had cumulative in their careers. Mm-hmm. So, the, I mean, the times you give a solid uh, co- top five Hall of Fame quarterback, let's just call it what it is. He's a Hall of Fame mm-hmm. quarterback, a top 10 defense. I think that's what Salais and, and the Jets are banking on here. They're saying, listen, if we can get a top 10 defense, we'll go to the Super Bowl because we got Rodgers. They gotta hope the 2017 or 2018, 2019 Rogers shows up. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. How long before Rogers starts bringing up retirement talk? Like if the age don't yeah, start off has. well, like yeah, yeah, he's just gonna retire, right? And he has that he has that capability. I I don't think the Jets have done enough on defense to match up with the Bills. You look at last year, you look what the Jets did. The Jets clearly frustrated a first year offensive coordinator, and they clearly frustrated Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. And you know you need to be able to take advantage of. And change, I, I agree with with Paul. They're going to be well coached. But what's different about this defense that says, "Oh, that's that's the piece that was missing." Absolutely nothing. And now you have a second year offensive coordinator who we played Jets week one. Does anyone remember what our offensive coordinator and Josh Allen put together week one against the Super, defending Super Bowl champions last year? Say what you want about how the Rams finished the season. They were fully healthy week one, and we destroyed them destroyed them so is this gonna be and i'm on record saying we're gonna lose week one just because i believe in vegas but still like (laughs) like can that happen too what if we blow out the jets week one what happens then because i i feel like i can guarantee that if the jets do not make the playoffs rogers retires if the jets don't win a super bowl jets fans and and Everyone is going to be disappointed in the coaching staff, disappointed in Rodgers, and they would have every right to be. To the, to to me, for for the Jets, this isn't division win or bust. This is Super Bowl or bust season oh, yeah. for them because you don't know how long Rodgers is going to be there. He can retire after one season, and you just mm-hmm. don't know what's going to happen. And uh, I think they really back themselves in the corner. That could potentially work. We saw it work in Tampa Bay with Brady. We saw it work in St. Louis with Matthew Stafford, or sorry, Los Angeles with Matthew Stafford, um, but could backfire big time. And, uh, you know, you look at those, you look at those other two situations I just mentioned, neither one of them had, were in a division with a Josh Allen. So, yeah, yeah I think that's a great point, Joe, right? Like if you're Rogers, you just stepped into the hardest division in football, mm-hmm. in, in my opinion, right? I, mm-hmm. I, I, I think you could probably... I think that's debatable, right? Sure. But I think you could say the AFC East is one of the two hardest divisions of football, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I, I I don't know, man. Like, you want to go against Josh Allen? Like, mm-hmm. I get you want to go against Mac Jones. Like, that makes <laughs> sense. I get you want to go against Tua. I'm good <laughs> there too, right? But you want to lose two games to Josh Allen and feel, and feel vulnerable? Like, mm-hmm. Rodgers isn't that guy. And this that's what he's volunteered for. Like, why didn't you just go to Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Right? Like well, the, the thing is though, Paul, I got a couple of things for both of you guys. 
Number one, I don't think he cares one bit. He's got 50 million reasons why he doesn't care if he loses to Josh Allen because for his entire career, he's been compared to Brady and how he can't get it done in the playoffs and Brady's so much better than him. What is, what is a kid, the upstart, you know, freak show, Clydesdale, what if he beats him? Who cares? I've already, I've already dealt with a guy I, I didn't even face mm-hmm. that people think is better than me. I don't think he cares about that. He has a Super Bowl ring. He has a Hall of Fame career. Rodgers is going to Rodgers. And like you say, the Jets are going to Jets. Rodgers is going to be Rodgers. I don't think he cares about losing to the Jets. Or I mean, I don't think he cares about losing to the Bills. I think Rodgers has everything to gain and nothing to lose in this scenario because he's already won one. He doesn't care. He's going to go up against Belichick. He's going to have some fun with that. He's going to go up against the Bills. And, you know, the thing I wanted to ask both of you guys, I want to start with Paul because you both agreed on this point. I believe the Jets are – a, and I agree with you. They're such a great defensively coached team. Are they better coached than the Bills? The defense. Um, mm, that's a tough one. Because I would, I'll one. be the bad guy in this because I have such high regard for Soleil, and I had, I know you such do. such high regard for Frazier, but Frazier's mm-hmm. not there. It's McDermott now, mm-hmm. and I've loved McDermott's defenses. However, they've always complimented a high-scoring offense. That's the only time they were really, really good was when they complimented a high-scoring offense. It's not his yeah. defenses are good. I think didn't the, didn't the Jets lose a game last year when their defense gave up like six points? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if McDermott yeah. had that game. I don't think McDermott well, had a game like that. You know what, Mar? Let then let's let's just take this in in squads, right? Yeah, the pass yeah. rush for the Jets versus the pass rush for the Bills. For one season, which one are you taking? Jets versus Bills? Yeah. Oh, Von Miller well, healthy? Yeah, no, no, yeah. right now. Right, right now. now? Right now. Yes. Okay, so we're looking at Myers, uh, uh, Jermaine Johnson, first mm-hmm. round pick, Quentin Jefferson, Quinnen Williams, and Carl Lawson, mm-hmm. and or Will McDonald. You have three first round picks mm-hmm. Yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I got to take the Jets. Mm-hmm. Okay. Linebacker group. Oh, Jets. Jets. Okay. So, so you see where this is going, right? Yes. So yes quarterbacks, okay. like I'll be honest, Sauce Gardner is better than every secondary player on this roster. I agree, but as a whole, as a whole, right. I would still take the Bills. Do you think I would, you, take, you, the you think the bill, I would take the Bills? I would take the Bills because I, I think okay. the Bills, the Bills should be better overall coached than the yeah. secondary, right? Yeah. Safety position, I think you're taking Hyden Poirier, right? Yeah. Correct. So the question is, yeah. how bad is that for Buffalo, right? Like, is that where Buffalo is going to take advantage? They're going to take advantage of, of you know, being able to outman corners? Like, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't think so. Right? Soleil has but, always been aggressive with his front seven. I think that's where Dorsey has to figure it out. You, you, right. you talk about that, but, you know, I, I, you talk about the defensive end pressure. Who's more likely to go down facing pressure, Josh Allen or Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers ain't running away from anything. Yeah. Right, right. But Josh gets so flustered by pressure yeah. that what ends up happening is the plays break down very, very quickly, quick. right? Very it quickly. turns into backyard football. I yeah. think you can pressure Josh out of good situations, mm-hmm. right? I think you can pressure Josh out of advantages for the offense, right? And it's not that that not that it doesn't uh it's not that he doesn't take advantage of plays when they break down. Of course he does, right? Mm-hmm. But I think teams can kind of control uh what they are going to allow Josh to see um, by bringing pressure because he does he does jump out early sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, and, and just puts it on himself. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think a good pass rush is dangerous. Good pass rush, good linebacker play. You control everything seven yards and in, and, and Josh is going to have a tough day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, I, if, and if your secondary is better than the Jets' secondary, is that going to bother Rodgers at all? Nope. No, he doesn't care. He's that's literally, what, that's what I mean, he's lit up some really good de- uh, secondaries in his time, right? And I really think he doesn't care. Um, yeah, but I mean, so if we're, if we're to do a compare, because we've already done one episode, we did it on the Dolphins. If we were to compare mm-hmm. the Jets to the Dolphins, mm-hmm. who do you think made more strides in the offseason to try to overtake the Bills, the Jets or the Dolphins? The, the Jets, Jets, the Jets okay. simply because of the quarterback position. You know, the Dolphins yeah. did nothing to address their quarterback position here. Yeah, here that's what I was going to say. It's like a guy. different episode. We're, yeah. we're yeah, shooting Mike White, you, yeah. you mind your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> 
we have a history of Aaron Rodgers staying healthy. We do not have a history of Tua Tagovailoa staying healthy. Right, and the quarterback's the most position in the in the in the NFL. It's you, for that reason alone, you got to go Jets. That's yeah, pretty I think remarkable. The, yeah, the Jalen Ramsey thing is just a non-factor to me. No. Like I, I just like okay, that's great. Mm-hmm. You got a guy who's gonna think you guy trying to play corner who should have transitioned to to nickel linebacker, mm-hmm. right? Like okay, sure. Is he that physical to play play nickel? I'm I think asking. yeah, I, yeah, I think he's I think he's he's I think he's uh. What's the best way to say this? I think he's reckless enough to be a good middle or a good nickel Ooh. linebacker. I think I he's reckless enough to be a good nickel linebacker. I agree with you. He's he's cocky enough too. That's to, what I mean. If he gets yeah. beat, he doesn't care. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah it's you know. happened so much. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fu- it's funny because if you ever notice after the games, like players take off jerseys and stuff, Jalen Ramsey will never sign his spikes because they're they're so burned. There's just, there's nothing left. <laughs> All right, so guys, I guess you know. In conclusion, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button before you head out. Uh, leave a comment, Jets fans. We know you're going to have them. Make sure you leave a comment down down below for Joe, uh, for Paul to read and have a little fun with. I could just say this: after two of these episodes, we're going to be doing New England next week. But after two of these episodes, I think it's clear <laughs> that if Rodgers would have went to Miami, these episodes would have been very, very different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very very different mm-hmm. so like i said leave a comment down below uh leave a like and subscribe and we're out of here